units an acre could have been done by the city and only the city. Forget about pairing up with private enterprise. Oh, no. I, I, I happen to think that involving the, the private sector is a very smart thing to do. I don't, I don't like the way we did it in region. I think it's wrong. That's a fundamentally but different if, subject. If, if engaging but, private enterprise is the smart thing to do. Oh, of, co and of I, course well, you involve the problem them. You run into, of course problem you run into when you maximize the replacement of affordable units and then you've got market units right next door, there tends to be a reluctance if the affordable housing component is over dense for the market units to be actually sold. I, I, I want to tell you, you should go and talk to Mitch Cohen. Mitch Cohen has actually been saying to City Home, why don't you put some of your affordable units in my condos? Why don't you buy them so you can do that? And the city said no. He's the guy. The developers actually said, we want to mix them together. That's well, what I, didn't say, I, I would love to talk to him. Well, talk to him. I Phone him up. Mitch Cohen, he's you know, Daniel's group. He'd be delighted to talk to you. And I will. Good. Thank you. Good. If you need the contact, let me know. As a matter but of fact, it's I, pretty I straight bet forward. Daniel's doing a development in my area right now. Yeah. Surprising they didn't, uh, Most surprising they didn't come across with that, exam, with that uh, option. What they did was they... they well, and, and unfortunately in Regent, we've taken the view that the, the lower income people live over here in these units and the, the moderate and higher income live in these units. It's the wrong way to go. The w right way to go is the way we did it in, Lo in St. Lawrence of mixing them all together. Whether you put them in the same building or next door, the market units, the values that you need to attract for the market units are not as high, or won't be as high, and it doesn't make the project viable. It's that simple. That's the reality of the market. Phone Mitch Cohen. I will. It might change your mind. I doubt it. All right. Yeah, uh, that might be true too. Thank you, Councillor DiGiorgio. <laughs> Councillor Nunziata was next. Yes, just a question. Um, you started off your deputation in criticizing the administration on the lack of uh, uh, funding to maintain our buildings. Um, you are aware that um, when we amalgamated that the province downloaded Metro housing and all the housing stock to the city and the condition of the buildings were as it is today, there was no money at all invested in the, in the buildings prior to amalgamation. You are aware of that? Yes, I am. And, and that's why we are where we are today. Uh, I, I, 20 years later, sorry, I don't believe that. I believe it's a lack of uh, the... The failure of leadership on the on the on the part of the city over the last 20 years. That's what I believe. I, I have no question there were some financial issues. Well, no when we amalgamated, that. our buildings, Metro Housing buildings, were the worst buildings, and we inherited those buildings. I, I understand that. I understand. And nothing that. was done prior to that. I I understand there was a problem. I I'm a fully aware problem. of it. I, I I you must remember I was the chair. Yes, uh, I know. Of the board of the Metro Toronto Housing Authority during the 1980s. I'm fully aware of what those buildings and are And those like. buildings were in worse shape. Thank oh, you. Oh, no question than that. No question. I'm not, I'm not quarreling with that. I do not quarrel for one minute with that. Thank you. Uh, don't, don't, don't wait. There's more. Um, we have um, Councillor Palacio, I think, had a question for you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good to have you here. Is, uh, I kind of agree to a point that the Toronto Community Housing happens to be not one of the best landlords in the country. I do agree with you from that perspective. But uh, some of the key points that I would like to make in terms of questions to you is, um, and this is a follow up to Councillor Nunciara's question, is uh, during the amalgamation, all the downloading that was done to the city in terms of Metro Toronto Community Housing, Ontario Housing, all the social projects that we had were downloaded without any capital funding, right. any maintenance funding. It was wrong. I, then you may recall that we have even those Metro Toronto Community Housing limited buildings for seniors where you had or we had by then even on-site support services and, and so on, but all of that was done without any funding to the city. I understand. And yeah. I, I, I was strongly opposed but to amalgamation, now, you no, may, no. May remember. You make some critical comments there in terms of the administration or the administ perhaps previous administrations failing to do that. The question is, during the Miller administration, 
actually, there was a monumental amount of work to force, literally speaking, the province through auditing processes to figure out how much capital funding was needed for the state to repair with the Trump community house. Are you aware of, of that? Yeah. Are you aware, is, um, Mr. Sewell, that through this administration, finally, the three levels of government have come together, finally, to address the state of good repair that has been literally falling apart. And now things are falling together, thanks to that extensive amount of work that's been done out there. Do you, would you agree with that or not? No. Uh, tell me, why not? Well, I mean, because the funding is coming, the money is there, $250 million. Dollars. Yeah. I, I love things that are coming in the future. They aren't going to be here right now, just hold on, wait a minute, you know, maybe we'll hear in three years, maybe they're in four years. The point is that we know we've had problems with this housing since amalgamation. 20 years, it's been 20 years. This is a long-term failure. And you know, maybe you're, you're moving ahead in little bits and pieces at the moment, but in fact, we aren't increasing the amount of affordable housing we've got. It's on the way down. So what's the option? You are talking about making changes. If, the option, if what the city is doing in a very proactive manner right now in terms of getting things together and actually building up, and that's the purpose of this debate, so you were, you were talking about making changes. What kind of changes have to happen to, for that miracle to happen? I, I think there has to be a real commitment on the part of City Council that's going to be commitment? spending money, if it's their own money, on in fact increasing the amount of affordable housing and make sure that that's happened so when we, we can see these units that are in desperate repair, we've replaced them before we actually Mr. demolish Mr. them. That, Keep it, is, uh, talk is easy, or as they say, talk is cheap. Now, in terms of, you are proposing something. You are proposing changes, making change. I want to hear those changes. You are deputing. You are telling us what needs to be done. I think we are doing our part in terms of knocking on doors to the other two levels and to ask them to come with the funding. Now, you tell me, tell us what kind of changes are you proposing that you bring to the table that will create that catalyst that we need. Yeah. Just well, tell me, please. As I say, the. The, the very visible commitment to increase the amount of affordable housing and actually seeing it happen on the ground, which is not happening. Maybe it will happen. Has, isn't happening right now. That's the problem. Do you think that the private sector is going to come in to save them? No, they won't. They, they can't afford to do it on their own. No question about that. So do you think I wouldn't doubt that for a moment. The there are some of, of very positive private developers out there who are worth listening to and talking to. I mean, the Mitch Cohen thing is just one example. So do you think this is going to be built on the property tax base or by, or by working partnership with My the argument levels? would be if, if the property tax base is the only thing that we can get, then let's do it. And let's say maybe some of the other dubious things we're spending money on, we aren't going to, we, we'd prefer to do it this way. What and I think, that, I mean, uh, you know, I could get into a long thing about the strategy of actually building housing, um, you know, and again, going back to what we did in, in, the, in the 70s, where we built an awful, we were the largest builder of, of rental housing in Toronto, the city home was at that point, um, you know, but, but uh, I'm not going to do that now. So, but you don't that's, have that's to the side. So you don't have any recommendations in terms of real changes, changes that would make a difference that probably were failing to, to grasp. Because I can see a lot of work, a lot of good work is taking place. So I'm just asking you. Last question. Thank you. Well, I, I, you know, well, let me say it again. I, I think there has to be a demonstrable commitment that shows that the on the ground that shows the amount of affordable housing is increasing, not decreasing. Um, and you know, that would be a good start. And then there's various ways to do that. I've, I've pointed out the, you know, the fact that the city owns an extraordinary amount of land scattered throughout the city, you know, 110 public housing units, uh, projects, all of which can be redeveloped for the betterment of the neighborhoods in which they are found. You know, there's lots of land. There's not, there's no problem there. But we, we aren't seeing that kind of a thing. We're seeing a, a whole sector, you know, the, this whole public housing sector just going downhill and downhill. And I'm here to just note the fact that this is a big thing that is happening. Thank it you, shouldn't Mr. be happening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Plazzo. Councillor Thompson. 
Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Mrs. Sewell. Mrs. Sewell, it's always a pleasure to see you, sir. Nice to see you. Spent a lot of time with police service boards. Good to see you then. In the good um, old days. In the good old days, yes. Uh, so, Mrs. Sewell, um, so I hear what you're saying is so um, there's a requirement, uh, ingredients, if you will, in terms of moving forward. Leadership is required. Um, there's a money requirement. Money, too. Commitment, obviously, to doing this and also in terms of increasing the affordability. Uh, I just wanted to understand. So. The leadership uh, that the mayor is providing now, which I've been here now for 14 years, seems to be rather different from previous leadership on this particular file. There's a commitment from the mayor providing leadership. There is money that's being put forward, and albeit it may not be enough, but it's the scarce resources that we're dealing with and so on, as well as the need to add more affordable housing. So we've been doing that through Build Toronto. Build Toronto has been playing a role. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, that Build Toronto is adding. Now, not large numbers, but small numbers incrementally, and of course not to provide the, uh, the required number. But I wanted to ask if there is some advice you could offer to the mayor. I know you've spoken about a variety of things this morning based on the questions. Uh, his commitment and his leadership is not to be questioned based on what he's done in terms of partnering with or trying to partner with the two levels of government to make things happen. What additional advice would you offer? Well, Mr. Mayor, it's actually pretty noisy in here. I just want to make sure I can hear Mr. Sewell. The buzz, uh, ladies and gentlemen, not created by the hydro, so if you could... Uh you could just keep the conversations to a minimum. We have some questions going on from Councillor Thompson and Mr. Sewell, so uh, thank you. So I, obviously, we need much stronger leadership on it. Okay. Uh, I'm not quarreling. Yeah, there's been sure. a, bit, a bit of a turnaround from what sure. we've had. Yeah. Um, uh, well, sorry, a significant turnaround yeah. from, from the four days, as an example. Uh, but I think the city has to show that it is serious about building more affordable housing and that if it can't get the funding and support of the, the other levels of government, it's going to go ahead on its own with a number of projects. And it has to be a substantial, uh, a substantial program, not a small program. Right. And as I say, I believe that the, the place to start is redeveloping 110 public housing projects. I mean, that's an extraordinary opportunity. You don't need any more land or anything like that. You don't have to pay the interest on any land. Um, you're going to get the support of neighbors who are not happy with public housing projects because of the way they're developed. There are good ways of redeveloping it. In, in a book I published in 1994, I showed three plans of how you redevelop three different kinds of public housing projects. So, so that's the kind of thing that I think is needed. I suspect you're going to need a fundamentally different board on the Toronto Community Housing Project that would show some interest in this. Okay. And you talk about uh, intensification on lands that are owned. No question. Intensification. City. That yeah. should be done. Not high rise. I'm not a high right. rise guy, but you know, it's like St. Lawrence. Most St. Lawrence is eight stories high. That's okay with me. And that's 100 units as opposed to Regent where they're 20, 25 stories and it's the density is not as big. So. Right. And so, but I just want to make sure that um, you're saying the leadership is there. We have to enhance that a, a bit, I guess. That's going to have to ratchet it up a lot. We don't want to have situations like this. Okay. I don't want to have to come down and say we're destroying a bunch of stuff. Right. Mr. Sewell, it's always a pleasure speaking. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, sir, we've got more. Uh, why don't you come, uh, sir? Um, you remember. Uh, Councillor Fletcher was next. Yes, uh, good morning. Um, I'd just like you to tell us a little, I'm over here, John, over here, over here, over well, there here. you are. Not, not in the front row. <laughs> okay, thank you very second much. Second row. Um, just tell us a little bit more about how St. Lawrence was developed. I've heard so much about St. Lawrence oh. as an important model. You've just talked about 100 units per acre. I believe I heard that when I was listening. Yep. And that's quite phenomenal. Nobody's managed to reach that density yet. Yeah. Can you give us? So, okay, St. Lawrence. I mean, I think the point we've got to remember about St. Lawrence is it? that we started construction 1976. So the first buildings are now 40 years old. Uh, most of the development is at least 30 years old. And I think everybody would say it is a success. If you can live in downtown Toronto and St. Lawrence, you're really happy. So this is not a housing project that's a failure. Um, and uh, the city decided in 1974 that we would actually buy some abandoned land downtown. It's south of Front Street, 
from young over to parliament it was totally abandoned just ugh, sit. it was really ugly land and we said we're going to buy it and make it into a housing development people thought we were uh, this is a bit odd 